Gambare, gambare. Yeah, that's me. And you're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. Well, it's mainly because I decided to go toe to toe with the devil himself, the literal reincarnation of pure evil. Alright, the episode starts off with Megami about to receive a straight ass whooping from Toji. Megami concludes that Toji is basically Marky but with all his stats maxed out. Toji goes to hit Megami with a paladin strike from Inazuma 11, but Megami summons his rabbit and ends up sensing Sukuna. You already know someone is about to be a problem if everyone can sense his presence just by him logging into the game. Megami tries to box with Toji, but without even looking at him, Toji is just reading and blocking all his moves. This is a real father and son interaction. Toji headbutts Megami. And, and hold up, does this man Toji have his eyes closed? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, Toji is so unserious fam. Toji throws his weapon in the air and stamps the floor with so much force all the rabbits Megami summon fly up. This scene looks like something straight out of One Punch Man. He flicks projectiles at all the Shinigami, killing all of them and he did all of this before his weapon even landed back in his hand. Alright look bro, if I'm boxing someone and they pull some shit like this, I'm hitting the jets bro, I'm, I'm skedaddling out of there. I want no business fighting a literal super saiyan. We end up switching over to Panda and this absolute fraud of an old man. Jokes aside, though i gotta respect him panda suggests going down to the fifth floor to save gojo but this guy basically started thinking to himself i will not be going down there to save gojo if they packed up gojo then we must be dealing with straight demons i got a wife and kids at home we skip back to toji and megumi and toji is literally wiping the floor with him megumi is in an infinite combo right now toji is really trying to isekai megumi <laughs> <laughs> Fam, is Toji not just a regular human being? He has no business throwing trucks like he got Toon Force or something. Megami stops running and decided to come up with a plan to defeat Toji. He leads Toji into a building and summons Falco, baiting Toji into this alleyway. Megami's plan is basically to land a counter punch. But as Toji locks eyes with Megami, he realizes, damn, this nigga looks exactly like my son. So he asks him what his name is to confirm and when Megami said Fushiguro, it confirmed the suspicion, so he did what any loving father would do. He killed himself. That's right, Toji realized he would have had to pay 16 years worth of child support, so he said nah, I ain't paying all that and left the service. All jokes aside though, hearing the mother's voice and seeing that Toji and Naobito flashback truly shows that, you know, despite being a deadbeat, he really does care about Megami. It's crazy how they just killed him off again though. If this was any other shonen, they'd probably have Toji teaming up with Megami. So yeah, this caught me off guard a little bit. We spin back to Sukuna and Jogo, and whether you like him or don't like him. Jogo stands on business no matter what. He fought the two undisputed strongest people in Jujutsu Kaisen, puts him up against anyone else in the verse and he's low-key winning or at least going to like extreme difficulty. Jogo tries to charge his fireball but Sukuna turns this man's hands into straight crabby patties. Jogo regenerates and starts spamming his freezer death beams but Sukuna just keeps weaving. Hold up, did the temperature just increase? See the little details like this is why I like Mappa so much as a studio fam. This change in animation really gives me like Mob Psycho 100 vibes for some reason. Jogo tries to punch Sukuna but he blocks it and shreds his hands up again. But Jogo tilts his head downwards and tries to hit Sukuna with that Iron Man chest beam but Sukuna is Weave Nation certified and continues ragdolling Jogo across the entire map. Jogo begins locking in and sets almost the entire stage on fire with lava and then creates these makeshift hands out of lava in an attempt to squish Sukuna. But on some pure angelic timing, Sukuna slices through Jogo's attack and starts chasing him down like he's in Devilman Crybaby or something. Man. Man, I should have stayed at home. I'm getting pieced up. I knew I couldn't hang with him, but I just had to show off, huh? Sukuna with the full palm down slams Jogo through an entire 12 story building and then picks him up by his jacket like he's no bro. Jogo did not take lightly to this and summons a miniature sun. Like, like, Jogo pulls up an entire meteor ready to throw at Sukuna. But as Panda and the fraudulent old man try to escape, he teleports in between them and tells them not to move. He was basically waiting for Jogo's attack to get close enough before he allowed them to try and escape and the only good reason I can think of why bro would do this is for his sick twisted enjoyment. This man is pure evil. Jogo thinks he hit Sukuna but Sukuna was just sitting behind him unscathed unbothered and asks him why he ain't using his domain expansion. Jogo explains that he already tried to use that against Gojo and he got bodied. So Sukuna offers to go flame for flame and Jogo is flabbergasted because this basically means that Sukuna has more than one inherent curse technique. 
but Jogo like the goat that he is and if there's one thing that we can all agree upon about Jogo is that he will never duck the fade it doesn't matter who or where he's always going to run the ones they both charge their final move and before we even get to see the final impact Jogo gets sent to the door of death where he meets Dagon and Hanami hey I went out throwing hands at least they needed two of the strongest sorcerers to finally kill me man I just wanted to be a human and out of nowhere Sukuna spawns in and starts explaining why Jogo failed as a cursed spirit. This speech is what I mean by Sukuna having that Kobe Bryant Mamba mentality. You want to be a human or you want to have the privileges that humans have. Either way it's a weak mindset. You want to rely and be surrounded by other curses. That's boring. If you want to achieve your goal you need to burn everything in your path regardless of the gain or the loss. You gotta keep pushing forward until you become strong enough to beat someone like Gojo. The reason you lost is because you lack hunger. You didn't want it bad enough. When he said that shit to Jogo, I had to look around the room to make sure he wasn't talking to me. Sukuna was basically telling Jogo that he didn't grind hard enough towards his goal and that's why he lost. That was low-key inspiring. He ends off the speech by saying that compared to the people and the curses that he fought thousands of years ago, Jogo is truly strong and he should stand proud. That was kinda wholesome. As we see Jogo crying, we pan out to his eviscerated body. Buddy. Today, we lost a real one. The man that never ducked a single fade and always stood on business. The disaster curse, Jogo. Yeah, let me get uh, two quick picks in the. Don't know, that's you? <laughs> boy, boy, look at you. Boy, looking like 1968. <laughs> Go ahead, old boy. Hey, nah. I'm fooling with you today. I'm fooling with you now. <laughs> Hey, if you made it to the end, I just want to say thank you. I really love making these videos for you guys and the comments and the likes always make my day. So uh, yeah, appreciate the love and support. Uh, the growth lately has actually been insane. I think I've gained like 100 subs this month. So um, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. Yeah, it helps a ton. So uh, peace. Oh, damn. You, you still here? Uh, that's kind of crazy. Um, you may as well subscribe. But uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say. Um, you can go now. Leave a comment though.